Hi everyone, it's great to see you all. Welcome to my talk on wrangling API integrations in the Wild West using Saloon. Today we're going to learn about a new way of building API integrations for our PHP and Laravel applications using Saloon. It provides a beautiful way of building these integrations that are highly testable and readable. I think you're going to like it. I've got my cowboy hat at the ready. Let's go jump straight in. So I thought I'd start with an introduction. My name is Sam Carre, and I'm a web developer from the south of the UK. I've been a PHP developer for over 10 years now. And over the last few years, I've contributed a lot in the open source community. And it's something I really love doing in my own time. When I'm at work, I work at a company called Planner Technologies. We're currently building a modern financial CRM for the United Kingdom's financial industry. Um, and I get to work every day with some super passionate and lovely people. I'm really lucky to call these people my colleagues. I love web development. I love PHP. I'm a big fan of country music. Um, and Saloon is my latest project that I have been working on. And I can't wait to show you. So to start off with, what is Saloon? Well, Saloon is a PHP package that you can install that provides you with a beautiful way of building API integrations or SDKs for your PHP application. You're probably already familiar with the likes of Curl or Guzzle, and these are tools to communicate with third-party APIs. What Saloon does is provide you with a super simple and elegant way to build API integrations that are clean, testable, and reusable across the whole app, your whole application. So why use Saloon? So I originally built Saloon to help myself when I was working at Planner um, to build more standard API integrations across all of, our, all of our applications. I found that I was using Guzzle or the HTTP client. And while those were great tools, I found myself copying and pasting the code a lot. I found myself writing actions and service classes and binding them to the container and, and all sorts of fancy things to just make these integrations more standardized. Somewhere I could put base URLs and default headers across all my requests. Um, so I built Saloon as a way to help standardize integrations and make it easier to work with when you've got many API integrations. If you've got one or two API integrations or you're making one API call in your application, then Saloon might not be for you. But if you're making multiple API calls across multiple integrations with multiple third parties, then Saloon's definitely for you. It helps you standardize your API calls, places things into opinionated classes called connectors and requests, and has an amazing set of functionality that you can use out of the box. So I'm just going to change here to my other screen and show you some of the documentation. So you can find the documentation at docs.saloon.dev and it's a comprehensive guide on using Saloon with its many features and additional plugins. Okay, so that's enough talking. Let's get to wrangling those API integrations. We're gonna go over to code and we're gonna go through the basics of building an API integration with Saloon, connectors and requests. Then we're gonna go into how to test API integrations, how to make that testing story a lot less scary. Um, and we're then going to go into some more advanced features. So you should get a good idea of what Saloon has and some of its functionality with this video. Okay, so let's get started building an API integration with Saloon. Um, I'm going to use the Movie Databases API um, for today's integration. Um, it's a great service with a fantastic API and we'll be able to query lots of different types of data with the movie database. It's a service that allows you to see movies and information about movies and TV shows. We're going to be using Laravel um, for this tutorial, but Saloon is framework agnostic. You don't have to install it in Laravel and you don't have to use a framework at all. You just need to install it with PHP and the only requirements are that you have Composer. So let's get started. I've created a blank Laravel application. I'm going to install Saloon. So I'm going to head over to my terminal and we're just going to compose a require. So composer require Saloon PHP forward slash Saloon. So we've now installed Saloon. Let's head back over to our Laravel application and get started. 
So all API integrations with Saloon must have a connector. A connector is a class that you create in your application that basically allows you to store the things that should be shared across every request. So these are things like your base URL, default headers like accepts JSON, um, authentication, and sometimes even things like HTTP config, so timeout settings and things like that. So I'm going to go over to my application and I'm going to create a connector. I'm going to go into my app HTTP and I'm going to create a place for these connectors to live or just these API integrations. So I'm going to create a new directory. I'm going to call it integrations. And inside of this integrations folder, I'm going to create a new directory for the integration. This is because we could set up our application to be ready for other integrations in the future. So I'm going to call this the movie database. OK, and inside of here, we're going to create a new PHP class. And this PHP class is just going to be the movie database connector. OK, brilliant. So we're going to extend the base connector class from Saloon. And our IDE is going to say that something's wrong. This is because Saloon requires us to define a couple of methods when we create a new connector. In fact, it's only just one method. The only method that's required is a resolve base URL. So we're going to just define that. OK, so resolve base URL. It's a public function. And this is just where, what the base URL of the API is. So we're going to go back to our API documentation and we're going to find the base URL of this API. So the movie database, I've got a pinned tab here. And you can see the base URL, the, URL, the start of the URL that will be used across every API call is this api.themoviedb.org forward slash v3. So I'm just going to copy this and we're going to return a string and we're going to paste in our base URL. So this is the minimum of what a connector needs, but we're going to add a couple of other things. We're going to add some default headers because the movie database has is a JSON API, but we want to just tell it that we want JSON back. So we're going to extend a method called default headers. And inside here, we're going to return an array. And the array is keyed by the header name and the value is the value of the header. So we're going to provide an accept application JSON and we're going to do content type of application JSON as well. OK, so we're going to leave it here for the connector. There are other things you can do. You can define authentication. You can define um, config, things like that. But let's just let's just uh, get started with that. So I'm going to go over to my test here and I'm going to instantiate this connector. So dollar sign connector is equal to new the movie database connector. And we're just going to run this test. Let's just have a look at the connector class. So you can see we've instantiated it. Uh, there's some default properties that are not set. So the next stage is creating a request class. So each of your API integration requests are also classes. This allows you to define any requirements of that request, like path parameters or query parameters and things like that, all within the request class. You don't have to write them in your application in that line of code in your controller or somewhere else you can actually keep them keep all the stuff encapsulated in these classes similar to the connector okay so i'm just going to close the test here for, for you guys right so i'm going to create a folder in my the movie database directory called requests and we're going to start with a request we're going to query the most popular movies that the movie database provides so I'm going to create a new class and we're going to call this get popular movies request. OK. OK, so now we're going to extend the base request class. Again, there's a there's a method that's required for this, and that is the resolve endpoint method. So we're going to define that. So resolve endpoint. OK, and this is the resource this is where where the actual endpoint is so if we look back at our api we can go to popular popular movie lists so you can see we've got our base url slash v3 
forward slash movie forward slash popular. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to pass this in to our resolve endpoint method. So this was actually going to be joined with the connectors base URL. So you don't have to worry about putting the base URL in here. Saloon's always about reusability. Okay. We also need to define a property to define the HTTP verb, the, the, what we're going to be sending it as. So we're going to use a protected method. Method is equal to method get. So this is the HTTP method that we're going to use. It's just going to be a get request. Okay, so we have set up our connector. We've set up our request. Okay, so I'm just going to instantiate the request as well. Request is equal to new get popular movies request. Okay, so this is where it gets fun. So sending a request is really simple. We're going to define a response variable and it's simply connector arrow send and you have to pass a request class in. So we've got one instantiated here. Simple as that. So let's just test this and see what happens. Okay. So I've DD'd the response and you can see we've got a few parts of the response, like the PSR request that we built. Um, there's a PSR response. Um, let's look at some of the methods we can, we can call. So you can actually see already that something hasn't quite gone right here. Let's have a look. So we can use the status method and we can use the body method to see what has gone wrong. So you can see here 401 unauthorized and the message is invalid API key. You must be granted a valid key. That's fine. So the movie database is a authenticated API. You have to use an API key. So let's fix this issue. So we're going to go to our connector. So again, this is where you'd use the connector because we would want to apply a API key across all of our requests. So Saloon has a way of providing authentication in a couple of different ways. You can simply just pass in like the header or a query parameter, um, but we're going to use one of Saloon's authenticators. Now the movie database requires authentication in the form of a bearer token in the authorization header. You can see here authorization bearer and then our token. So what I've already done is I've already added my the movie database key to my env file and what we need to do is just a Laravel thing is we just need to set up our the movie database service. So I'm going to just pass this in here so the movie database key is equal to env the movie database key. Okay, great. So now in our connector, we need to provide the connector with the authentication. As I said, we could just pass in an authorization header bearer and then pass in our token. But I'm going to use a method that Saloon provides on the connector called default auth. So we're going to Use the default auth method. I'm just going to hide that for you. And in here, you have to return uh, an authenticator. They're listed in the documentation, but Saloon has most authentication types covered. But here, we're going to use the token authenticator. So we're going to return a new token authenticator, and it expects a value. So we're going to pass in our config services, the movie database key. Perfect. Let's have a quick look at what this does. So an authenticator is just a class that has a set method. And the set method, when it's run, will apply something. So you can see we're simply adding a header called authorization um, with the prefix bearer, and then we're appending the token separated with a space. Great. So we've now configured some default authentication on the connector. Okay. Let's go back to our request. And let's run this again and see what we get. Fantastic. So we're now getting a 200 response. And it looks like we're getting some JSON back. Um, right now, I'm using just the body method, which returns the response body just as a string. But Saloon has you covered. We've got lots of different methods that you can use to interpret the body and use this in your application. So since this is a JSON API, 
we're going to use the JSON method. So I'm going to run this again. And here you go, you can see that our response has now been decoded and is now in an array. So you can see that we've got our 200 status, we've got our um, array, and it contains a results, and we've got 20 results. And you can see that None 2, Sound of Freedom, Gran Turismo, some cool new films that are popular at the moment. So that's really powerful. The other thing is the JSON method accepts an argument which allows you to jump into the JSON, for lack of a better word. So we can actually use results. So we can pass in results because we can see we've got this results key here. So I'm going to pass in results. And there we go, look. So now Saloon has just returned the data inside the results. We just get an array, which is really cool. Saloon has lots of different methods to access the body. Um, I'll show you one more, and that's the collect method. So if you're using Laravel, you don't have to do anything, but the collect method uses Laravel's collections. So if you're not using Laravel, just install the collections library. But this will actually do the same thing. It will decode the JSON content and put it into a collection. So if I just change it to collect, you can see now we've got an instance of Illuminate support collection and we've got our items in here. So we can do all sorts of things. As, as, as you may know with a collection, you can do pluck and mapping and filtering. So we'll just pluck the title here. And there we go. It is so simple to get up and running with Saloon. And in our actual code, there's only three lines of code that we need. The rest of the code has been separated in really readable classes. So we've got our, the movie database connector and we've got our request. Okay, so we've covered the basics of connectors and requests. Some of the methods on connectors like resolving our base URL, default headers, um, and authentication. And we've also sent a request to see the response and see some cool methods that are on the response. The next part I want to talk about is one that I think is really important, and that's testing in Saloon. That's one thing that I've spent a lot of time making sure was right, and I'm really pleased to show you how it works. So testing can be done in API integrations in various different ways. You can use fake data that will swap the data out when you're running your tests, or in Saloon you can use fixture recording, and that's a really cool feature. But let's start with just a basic setup of testing. So I've got a test here, and I'm going to just instantiate my connect from request like we saw earlier on. So we've got our connector, and it's, we've got our new, the movie database connector, and we have our request, which is our new get popular movies request. Okay, and as you saw earlier on, we could send the, the uh, request just like this. Request, and we'll get a response. Now, sometimes you may choose to actually send real API calls inside of your tests, and that's fine. But most of the time, you might not want to because you may have an automated test suite. You may hit the API call many, many times, um, and you might cause issues with um, like throttling and rate limits and stuff like that. So a common practice with testing API integrations are to use mocks. So in Saloon, you can create what's called a mock client. So we'll create that now. So we'll make a new variable called mock client, and we'll instantiate an instance of the mock client in Saloon. And it accepts an array in the constructor. What the mock client does is it feeds a connector or a request some fake responses. So then we'll see if a mock client exists and if there are requests in the mock client, and if there are, it will actually swap the response out completely, which is really cool. So let's just have a quick look again at our response with the real data from the movie API. So you can see we've got a 200 response and we've got pages with the most popular movies. Now let's have a look at setting up our mock client. So I'm just gonna move this down a second so you can see. Okay, so the most basic mock response that you can do is one that you define yourself. So we'll just write out mock response make, and this accepts a couple of arguments. So you can define a body, you can define a status, and you can define response headers. 
So we know it's a JSON API, so we can actually use an array as the response data here. Um, and we know roughly that the response contains results and those results have metadata about movies like um, the movie title. So let's, let's just build something simple, something like that. So we'll provide an array and we'll provide a nested array called results. And inside of there, we'll have a single result um, with a title of Batman. Okay, so we'll also keep the default status of 200 and we don't need to pass any headers. Now to use that mock client, there's a couple of different ways we could do it. One way you can do it is just with the dollar sign connector with mock client and pass in the mock client. Now, whenever you send any requests through the through this client, through this connector, the mock client will be used and it will replace with the fake results. So let's just run this again. And you can see that my methods still work. We still get a regular response. And to our application, it, it thinks that the that it was a real request. So you can see we've got 200 status and we've got our results here. So this is a bit of a difficult example because we haven't really got an application to follow. But if you had an application like a Laravel app and you were making API calls, you can use the mock clients to replace fake, to basically fake your responses. And this is really handy. You can send all sorts of different types of um, mock responses. You can define them in different ways this is just a simple way of, of one after the other, but you can also define them by URL. So I could do, um, you know, a specific URL and a wildcard like that, and it would work only if that URL was hit. So that's the basics of faking in Saloon. The more advanced option, and one I actually recommend, is fixtures. So sometimes you're going to want to actually test with real data, like manually writing this out is going to become tedious, especially if you've got um, a response that has a hundred attributes into it, in it. It's just going to be a nightmare to build a mock response for. You can build it, but there's a better way. So Saloon has a built-in request recording functionality with zero extra dependencies. All you have to do is instead of mock response make, you can use mock response fixture and you have to give it a name. So we have to give um, the fixture a name based on what it's called. So we'll just call it, um, I like to prefix my fixtures with um, the movie, like the name of the connector or the API integration followed by a forward slash. Um, so we'll call it the movie database and we'll just use the, name, the word popular. Okay, so what this will do is Saloon will see that a file doesn't exist for the movie database slash popular and it will actually let the request go through for the first time. So you'll need to make sure that your test suite has your API credentials set up. Then what it will do is it will store the response in a JSON file, which we'll have a look at in a second. And the next time that we run it, if that file exists, it won't send the request. It will use the, the data in the JSON file. It's pretty magical. So let's have a look. So we're not gonna change anything else. I've just changed this mock response to a fixture. We're still using our mock client here and we're still sending our request. Let's send this. So you can see we're back to our real data, which is our page and results and everything like that. Let's have a look at our directory structure. So what Saloon will do is it by default, it will create a folder in your test directory um, so I'm using Laravel, I'll already have the directory. So I've now got a folder called fixtures. And if I open this, you can see I've got fixtures, saloon, then the name of my fixture. And it actually follows, if you put forward slashes in, it will create folders for you. So you can see I've got a folder called the movie database, and I've got one called popular.json. See, so now the actual response body is stored in this file. So if I run this test again, you can see, it's very, very fast. Now that's because it's using that fixture file. And I could even turn off my internet. There we go. And I can run this and everything is working just like it was. Fantastic. 
So fixtures are a really powerful way of testing because you get a real set of test data that you can play with. So again, I can use my collect results method and everything's pretty instant. I can see the data and I'm not making these constant API calls to uh, the, the API. So that's essentially the testing story with Saloon. You can create super easy tests with Saloon and you, you don't have to worry about how, how do I test third party APIs. The fixture recording is really handy and we also have the mock client if you need to use that as well. So now we're going to move on to some more advanced features of Saloon. Okay, so we've had a look at the basics like creating a connector and a request, sending that request, and then looking at the response. We've also looked at testing our API integrations using Saloon with its powerful fixture recording functionality and its mock client. Now let's have a look at some of the more advanced features that Saloon provides, like data transfer object support. So let's jump into the code. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our request that we've seen before, which is our popular movies request. And we're just going to send that request and see what we get back. Now we've, we're pretty familiar with this API now, we know what we get back. We actually get back a array of results and each array is a nested array with its own properties. This is great, but we could improve this with type support. We could improve this, just make this a better developer experience, especially if the data is gonna be moved around our application. So what I've done is I've created a movie data transfer object um, with just a few properties. We've got uh, an integer ID, we've got a string title, and we've got two other integers, a vote count and a vote average. What we're going to do is we're going to create a method on our get popular movies request to automatically cast the response into this data transfer object. It's really cool and it's very easy. Let's get started. So we're going to go into our get popular movies request and we're going to define a method called create DTO from response. This is a method that Saloon already knows about that once defined allows you to map how the DTO looks. Now, because it's a get popular movies request, not singular, we're going to return an array because we know it's going to return an array of movies. Now we're going to use the methods on the response to get the data that we want. We've already looked at the JSON method, so we're going to use that method that we've already used. So we're going to use response JSON, and we know that we can pass in a key in here, which is the nested data inside the JSON. So we're just going to call results. Now I'm just gonna dump the movies here, just make sure that we're getting this right. Okay, and over on our test, I'm going to change this to response arrow DTO. Okay, great. So this will actually be running the create DTO from response method. And you can see I'm now getting what I'm dumping out here, the movies. Next, what we want to do is we're gonna use array map, which is a PHP function, to map over each item in the array and convert it to something else. So we're going to use array map, pass in a function, and the second argument is the array, so movies. And in the argument of the closure, we're going to pass in our singular movie array. So again, let's just make sure that this is working and you can see we've got a movie. Now what we're going to do is we're going to return a new movie DTO, and inside of here, we're going to define our various attributes or properties. So our first one is ID, and the ID will be movie ID. Second one will be title, movie title. The third one will be vote count, movie vote count. And then we've got vote average movie votes average okay so what we're going to be doing so what this function is doing is it's iterating over every item in the movies array and converting it into a movie dto now let's go back over to our tests and we're using the response array dto method which will call this function and it will convert 
the response into a DTO, or in our case, an array of DTOs. Let's run this. Okay, amazing. So you can see now we've actually got an array of data transfer objects. You can see that we've got the IDs, we've got the titles of the movies, you know, we've got Gran Turismo, we've got the count of votes, we've got the average count, everything's working really well. So this is one of the more powerful features of Saloon. You can use DTOs across your application. Let's now have a look at an another cool feature that Saloon provides. Okay, so now we're gonna look at a really cool feature for Saloon, which is the pagination feature. Have you ever come across an API where when you make an API call, the results aren't all returned back to you in one request? They're actually separated across multiple pages? Well, it's a very common practice and building the implementation is quite difficult. You have to make an API call, then you have to keep a cursor increasing, you know, increase the next page, make the request to the next page, all that kind of stuff. With Saloon, you can actually install the pagination plugin and Saloon has a few pagination paginators that have been built to support different APIs to automatically iterate through pages of requests. Let's have a look at an example and then let's implement it in Saloon. Okay, so let's have a look at the movie database here. I found an API endpoint called Airing Today, which just returns a list of TV shows that are airing today. And in the response, you can see that we've got a page, but we've also got these results. And we also have total pages. So there are actually nine pages of shows that are airing today. And there are, it tells us a handy amount, which is there's 177 total results. So let's build a paginator in Saloon and look at how it works. So I'm going to go over to my code and I'm going to go in and create this new request. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a new request class. Get airing shows request. And we're going to extend Saloon's request. We're going to define our method. Okay, and we're going to define our endpoint. So let's just have a quick look at what this is. Okay, now let's go over to our test and let's implement this. So we're going to instantiate our connector and we're going to instantiate our request. And we're just going to make sure that this works out of the, out of the box. Okay, let's dump the, this response. Status response body. Let's have a look. Okay, great. So we've got a 200 status and you can see we've got the various shows that are airing today. And let's just check at the bottom that we've got the same amount of shows. 177 and nine pages. So let's build a paginator in Saloon and look at how this works. First of all, you need to identify what type of pagination that your API is using. So we can see just off this that it uses page pagination. You may have an API that uses limit and offset, or you may have a cursor. Saloon has support for those three major pagination types. You can also build your own paginators, but we're gonna just cover the page paginator today. So first of all, we're going to install the pagination plugin. So we're gonna use composer require Saloon PHP pagination plugin. As you can see, we've installed it. And then we're gonna go over to our connector and set it up for pagination. So we're gonna go into our connector. I'm just gonna close this. And we're going to implement a new as pagination interface. This will require us to define a paginate method on our connector. So I'm just gonna define this here. And you can see the paginate method accepts a request and expects a paginator to be returned. What I'm going to do is I'm going to return a new paginator class, and I'm actually gonna use an anonymous class here just to save us writing another class. So in here, we're going to return a new class 
and we're going to pass in a couple of arguments. We're going to pass in our connector and we're going to pass in our request. I'm just going to use named arguments to make this a bit more readable. And we're going to extend the base paged paginator class. Okay. So this is also going to require a couple of methods. It's going to require a method is last page and get page items. Let's just import these here. Okay. Great. So now you can see this is how this is the what is required for our paginator to work. The paginator needs to know when it needs to stop iterating. So we've got a method here called is last page. If we go back to our request and we send this again. Let's just have a look at the data we have. So we've got results, we've got page is equal to one, and we've got total pages and total results. So we're going to use the total pages request here. We're, sorry, we're going to use total pages response to determine if we're on the last page. So this is really easy. We can return this arrow page is equal to response json total pages and i'm just going to convert this into an integer because it looks like it's, it could be a string okay great but next we're going to need to define our get page items this just tells saloon where the results are so as we've seen before we know that the results are in a results array so we're going to return response json results. Now this has to return an array and this will come in a little bit later. Fantastic. Okay, so now let's use this paginator. I didn't mention, but what this page paginator does by default is it will add a query parameter called page to denote the page. So by default, page one, then page two, then page three. Um, and you can also define a per page limit as well. I'm not gonna worry about a per page limit, 20 is fine. So if we work out um, the amount of pages that we need, well, you can see we've got nine pages that, that should come back. So if we go over to our test, we're going to change the, 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 the test a little bit. So instead of send, we're actually going to change this to paginator and we're gonna change this to paginate. This again accepts a request. And let's just have a look at our paginator. Okay. Right, the request must implement the paginatable interface. Okay, so this is a protection that Saloon has in place to make sure you don't use a request that's not made for pagination. So we're going to go onto our get airing shows request and we're going to implement the paginatable interface. Okay, so now let's run this again. And you can see it's returned a page paginator. We have just a base, some basic information set up. We've got the request and we've got our default page. Now, a paginator in Saloon is just a custom iterator in PHP. So you can do some very funky things with it, like using it in a for each loop. So let's just do that first. So we're gonna have paginator as response, and we're just going to dump the response and see if it works. Okay. Great, so we can see we've got a response, and I'm just gonna get the JSON here again. And you can see we've got the results. Great. Let's just make sure that this works across all the pages. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, array called results. And I'm going to use this here. So I'm going to do results is equal to array merge results response JSON results. Okay. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to run this and the paginator should automatically iterate through each page and make a separate API call per page. And there we go. So we've got 160 items in the array, which is really cool. So we've got all of the different types of TV shows that are airing today. Cool. Right. Okay. So I noticed that the response was a little bit lower than I was expecting, and that was because we just need to change the way the is last page works. So we're going to allow it to be greater than or equal to. So we'll we'll say it's greater than so that it won't make a request to an additional page. 
now when we run, run this request, you can see now we've got the response, the results that we're expecting. Fantastic, 177 results. And it's that quick. It's, it, Saloon has made nine requests and returned them all in one array, just like that. Now, we've done this resu results and array merge. It's a little bit messy. So let's use some of the other methods that we can use. So we've got paginator as an iterator, but you can also use the items method. And, in, and if we go into here and dump the item, now we'll actually iterate through each individual item across all of the pages. So we can just tweak the results to just append the item. Let's have a look at the results. 177 again, fantastic. Now, so this is really powerful. This is actually using the results get page items method. It's very powerful. Now, if you are using Laravel, we've talked about this before, you can actually use collections in the pagination plugin as well. So now let's look at my favorite way of, of using the paginator with the collection. So we're going to create a collection and we're gonna use paginator collect. And let's just see what this does. So we're going to look at the collection and you see it was instant. And that's because we've not done anything yet. And that's because we're using a special collection called a lazy collection. This accepts a PHP generator and essentially will iterate through the results as we go. So again, we can just do you know, for each of the collection, we can also do um, arrow all to get all the items. And you can see, there we go, we've got 177 results. But we can also do fancy things like pluck. So let's pluck the name of the shows and we'll run all. And there we go. So with one set of iterations, nine requests, we have been able to pluck the name of every show across every page of this nested paginated API endpoint. And it works great. It's so powerful. And it's one of my favorite features of Saloon. And that's it. Thank you very much for joining me on the whistle stop tour around Saloon in the Wild West. I really appreciate your time. Um, if you would like to learn more about Saloon, you can visit the link down here, or you can visit the documentation at docs.saloon.dev. Uh, if you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter, which is at kare underscore Sam. Um, but I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Steve and the Treble team for having me on. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I hope you have a great Hacktober. See you later.